friends and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about everyone's favorite houseplant pest, thrips. <laughs> so I did make a thrips video back in 2020, three years ago, about how I was dealing with them then, but quite a lot has changed for me in the past three years of pretty much having thrips on and off for that entire time and I wanted to talk to you about how I deal with them now that I am a little bit better versed in the whole thing and I've been doing it for a few years. I'm not as like squeamish about them now so I thought I'd hop on here today and share my sort of updated thrips dealio with all of you. Before I do though, I just want to say if you're new here and you don't know me already, hi, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with my houseplanty journey and maybe learn something along the way, stick around, watch some more of my videos, and subscribe to my channel if you're not new here. Thanks for coming back. I really appreciate it. Let's get into it. Before I tell you what's changed, I do just want to give a little bit of background about thrips in general if someone is just hopping on this video for immediate thrips care so they can know what they look like, signs and symptoms. So if you already know what thrips look like and you're just trying to figure out how to deal with them, skip to this time down below and I'll just share with you my prevention and treatment methods. But now I'm going to be talking about them a little bit more generally just to start with. Thrips are tiny slender bugs that suck the sap out of your houseplants, leaves usually, but sometimes stems, flowers, buds, etc. They just suck the life out of them slowly. They can come into your home a myriad of ways through open windows, when you're bringing in new plants from the outside, whether they're like from a shop or like plants that have summered outside that you're bringing in. They can come in on your clothes, on your hair, on pets so many different ways, but once they're inside of your home, they tend to reside on the undersides of your plant's leaves, hiding, so they're not the easiest to see. Sometimes they can be found on the tops of leaves as well, and the stems, but that is slightly less common. They're mostly on the backs. But they're long and skinny with pointy tails, and the adults usually are in a sort of black-brown color, and they have wings. Yes, they have wings. Yes, they can fly. <laughs> Makes treatment great. But the babies tend to look like many yellower, whiter forms of adults and without any wings. The babies tend to be between one and three mil. Adults are about three mil, maybe four. They're really not that big, so you do need to look quite closely if you're trying to find them. But also they can reproduce asexually, which means that there doesn't need to be more than one in order for an infestation to grow within your home. Their life cycle is that they lay eggs on the plant, those eggs hatch into nymphs, those nymphs crawl around on the leaves sucking out the sap of your plants, or they fall down into the soil where they emerge as adults. They climb back up on your plant and they continue this sort of life cycle. From egg to adult, it tends to be about two week time period, and then adults can live for about a month. So typically there are multiple generations of thrips living on your plants at the same time, which can make solving the issue quite difficult because there's a lot of stages that you need to get through in order to <laughs> get the problem solved completely. With thrips it is really important to notice the problem early. The sooner you notice the issue the easier it will be to control. So here are some signs and symptoms that you can look out for in your plants to make sure that you're catching it sooner rather than later. I tend to find like sort of yellowish, whitish, silvery streaks on my plants and sort of a bit of texture in those leaves where you can see that they've been sucking out the juices. From far away you'll also see that leaves are looking a bit more faded, kind of dirty. There might be some reddish brown spots, splotches on the leaves, or even like tiny little black dots, which is actually the thrips poop joy. <laughs> or you might be seeing that parts of your leaves are just starting to die off without any other explanation. So when I notice that a leaf is going a bit more yellow in my collection, I will look at it to see if pests, specifically thrips, is part of the problem. And also they do like to feed on new growth because it is a bit weaker. And so if your new growth is coming out stunted, 
that could also be a symptom of thrips. Honestly, I think the best form of treatment is prevention. And I know that's easier said than done because it does take a little bit of work, but I'm not gonna tell you to like close all your windows in the summer and strip off your clothes immediately when you come in and hop in the shower. No, that is absolutely unreasonable and I don't think that can be expected of anybody. And if that brings in thrips, unfortunately it can happen. But there are some ways you can deal with that preventatively still. One of the main things that you wanna be doing is monitoring your plants, keeping an eye on them, noticing any signs of weirdness, because if you're catching signs early, you're more likely to be getting in before the problem gets too bad. And I'd still count that as prevention rather than treatment. You're preventing an outbreak. You're preventing an infestation still if you catch like one or two around. It's also really important to dust your plants regularly, which I know I am quite terrible at, but it does help. And the act of you going around and having a look at your plants and dusting them will also be good to check them for pests. So it is a good way to keep like close contact with your plants and monitor them quite well. You also wanna be debugging any plants that are coming to your home, whether they're new from the store or coming in from summering outside. I would highly recommend you at least shower them off and have a look at them and then quarantine them for at least two weeks, keeping a very close eye on them because if there's any pests on those that have come in from the outside you don't want to be introducing them to your plants that you already have in your collection because thrips can spread quite quickly between plants so you don't want to be introducing new things in without quarantining them properly the next thing that i highly 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 recommend and i feel like this is the biggest change that i have made in my time as a plant parent is i have started using predatory mites for prevention so I get these predatory mite sachets on subscription through Ladybird Plant Care, who video is not sponsored by them, but I do really love their subscription program where you will get your desired amount of thrips prevention sachets every six weeks automatically. So I don't need to worry about when I put them on and remembering, I can just let the subscription run and whenever I get new ones, I can exchange out the old for the new and make sure my plants always have a little bit of protection because these will slowly, slowly, slowly release the predatory mites, this sort, I'm not gonna try and pronounce it because I am terrible at Latin names, especially insect ones, <laughs> but they'll slowly release these predators of the baby, specifically baby thrips. They are not adult killer thrips, they will only deal with the babies, but if you have these dotted throughout your home across your entire collection of plants, then if a baby does come in, if an adult comes in and lays eggs and babies hatch, then these will like get rid of the problem immediately rather than the problem getting out of hand and those babies growing into more adults who lay more eggs and like continue the life cycle over and over. So it kind of stops the life cycle before it can even start. So I use these all year round on my plants and I get them delivered every six weeks. I tend to use about one or two per square meter. I think I get 10 or 15 for my collection of 200 houseplants. I probably should get more if I were trying to like really, really be on top of it but it, it does tend to be a cost, but I would much rather spend a little bit of money every six weeks to have these than to spend a lot more money replacing plants after I've had an intense like infestation and outbreak, which could potentially kill a, like a chunk of my collection. So I'd much rather prevent and spend some money on that. And it's even not that much. I feel like 10 sachets every six weeks I feel like it was like £9.65. Not very much and a little goes a long way and it's just part of my general houseplant maintenance cost. Like instead of buying a new plant, I'll make sure that I have these. It's also important to note that you might not see them working. They are very, very small. I can just barely see them with my naked eye. I have used my microscope to see some previously. If I can find that footage, I will pop it in here. But you probably won't see them working, just like the thrips like to hide in your plants. 
these like to find the thrips that are hiding in your plants so they'll hang out in areas to hide within your plants. So you might not see them working at all but that doesn't mean that they're not doing their thing. Also if you don't have thrips at any point in time they can live off like the pollen in your plants for a little while and then they'll eventually die off after the four to six weeks and then you'll get new sachets and all will be well. I have also changed my stance massively when it comes to treating thrips. I go for a much more chilled out approach now. I'm much more lax with it. In the past few years I've really gotten used to having some sort of pest within my collection at some point or another, like almost all the time. So I've just kind of gotten used to it, which isn't necessarily a good thing, but I know what to expect and I know how to deal with them. It's not like emergency treating anymore because I am doing so much to prevent, but when I do treat it is also generally more chilled. And I should say that I've moved away from chemical pesticides, which I will get to in a little bit why I've done that. But the first thing I do when I am treating plants, when I notice a plant has like a bunch of thrips on them, I will remove that plant from the location it's in and isolate it. And then go in and check the plants that were originally around that one to see if they have thrips as well and also need the treatment. This is very important because thrips don't tend to stay on just the solitary plant. They will spread out if they have the possibility to do so. I make sure to prune any heavily infested parts, bits that have like far too many thrips for me to fancy dealing with or leaves that have been like damaged, repond bière, beyond repair. <laughs> because it's easier to physically remove the leaf with the thrips than it is to remove the thrips on their own. And if there is any eggs in there, they won't hatch, it's gonna be in the bin, it doesn't really matter. So removing any like heavily infected growth is the best possible thing. Also, I just go in and squish them sometimes and that's fine as well. So once I figured out that I have all of the plants with pests in that immediate vicinity, I will then move on to my treatment, which tends to be washing down the plant. I will run it under water, usually warmish water. You don't want to shock the plant. You also want to make sure you're not overwatering the plant in that time, because if you're treating, I would definitely suggest before you have something like predatory mites, repeating this process every few days in order to like make sure that your plants are very 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 clean. When you are spraying down the plants I would go over the tops, the bottoms of the leaves, and the stems. Try and avoid the soil if possible, like I said, for watering purposes. You don't want to be messing with your watering schedule too too much. Not that you should use a schedule, but you don't want to be watering too frequently with like pest treatment. That would just be like adding another, like adding insult to injury in this situation. You don't want pests and overwatering issues. I would also highly recommend washing down your plants with something like horticultural soap. I usually go in with this and a sponge. I sometimes dilute it to the 1 to 100 ratio in a spray bottle and use that to spray on my plants, but I will also sometimes just put this directly on a sponge and wash my leaves down with it and like wipe them, the tops, the bottoms, the stems, all around. And this is actually a natural like mild insecticide because the soap will go in and clog sort of like the pores of the insects. So like where they breathe from it'll clog that up as well as like stick to the moving parts of the insects making it harder for them to move around. So they won't be able to breathe as well and they won't be able to move as well. And so this is a great way to like sort of stop things in their tracks, as well as clean the leaves. If there's any that you haven't noticed on there, wiping down the leaves with a sponge and this will physically remove some from the plant as well. So it is, again, in cutting the cycle, breaking it in its tracks right there and then. I do that for a couple of weeks and see how things are going. I'll repeat the washing maybe every three or four days, if I could be bothered, maybe once a week. It is still like not one of my favorite things to do and it does require a bit of repetition in order for it to work. But I will also sometimes get myself a big thing of predatory mites. And these ones again do not kill the adults but there is 50,000 in this tube along with some vermiculite. So you can sprinkle these on the leaves of your plant and on the soil and stuff and they will go in and immediately start eating any of the 
um, baby thrips that are on your plant. So that does work. I should say that I have recently done this on a couple plants and the vermiculite has gone a bit moldy. So be careful when you're doing this that it's not too moist because it can go a bit funky, but I can just wash that off later. It's just not ideal to look at for the time being. <laughs> if you have an infestation of adults, which I have had in the last year, I went away on holiday, I came back, there was adult thrips in my Ikea greenhouse cabinet, my Millsbow. Not ideal. That was the first time I'd ever had an adult thrip infestation. And so what I did with these plants, I did the normal shower wash thing. And then I got myself some adult thrip killer predatory insects. So they're not mites, they're insects, they're bigger because they probably need to be bigger than the adult thrips in order to eat the adult thrips. And so I just got a bottle of those. I'll put the name of those on the screen as well. So if you're wanting to get them, I'll also be sure to link all of this stuff down below um, to the Ladybird Plant Care site that I get all of this stuff from because that's who I use. But the names are here if you don't live in the UK and you wanna try these things out for yourself elsewhere. But I got these adult thrip killers and they basically go in and fly around in your in your cabinet or the space that you're putting them in and eat the adult thrips which is brilliant again breaking the life cycle off as best as possible so that is kind of my main treatment system right now as you can tell there are lots of steps and it does require repeating over time and pretty regular monitoring but that's just what you need to do with pests especially if you're not using something like chemical pesticides which I have moved almost entirely away from. Actually, yeah, in, except in like huge emergency cases where I won't have time to like be repeating this treatment super frequently, I will not be using chemical pesticides. I do not use them anymore. And when I say chemical pesticides, I mostly mean Provanto. That is what I used in the past. That is what I recommended in my last thrift video. And I recommended it because it works. It will kill the thrips. It does. But <laughs> there are also tons of downsides to these as well. And not only do they kill the thrips, they will kill everything. Not the plant, but like every living thing like going on in, in the soil on your plant. All of those things. So you cannot use chemical pesticides in conjunction with predatory mites because they will kill the predatory mites and then you're just wasting your money. You also should wait. If you have used chemical pesticides, you want to wait like at least two weeks or the length of the application period because it's different for every sort of different type of pesticide but the length of the application period if it says like repeat after two weeks or repeat after three weeks that's the amount of time that i would suggest waiting between using a chemical pesticide and putting predatory mites or predatory insects onto your plants so it will it'll cause you'd have to wait on these things which isn't what you want to be doing when you're trying to treat a problem quickly. It'll also destroy anything that's going on in the soil, any beneficial insects in there, springtails, um, your soil's natural microbiome, all of that, which I'm like really trying to build up at the minute, especially with things like Rise of Plus from Liquid Gold Leaf and like natural good stuff in there. I don't want to be destroying that every time I get a pest, so I don't want to be spraying chemical pesticides. Also, it is proven that they are quite dangerous for mammals to inhale, specifically Provanto. The chemicals in that, there has been studies that have proven that those chemicals cause issues within mammals. So think about the pets in your home, the children in your home, you yourself in your home, though if you're an adult it's probably not going to be as bad as if you were young or small they can be detrimental and can cause health problems so i definitely suggest wearing a mask if you are to use chemical pesticides though i don't recommend it if possible they're also not great for the environment i wouldn't suggest using them outside because you're killing other natural wildlife in the area and even worse if having thrips was not bad enough your thrips can become immune to chemical pesticides like provanto they can become immune. So now you have like extra strong, badass, crazy thrips that are gonna be so much harder to kill um, if you 
happen and if they get out of control in your home. So I try and avoid that at all costs. I will very, 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 very occasionally use Provanto, like I said, if I notice a huge outbreak and I'm about to go away on holiday for a few weeks and I won't be able to monitor things, or as like a sort of very, very last stitch effort. Last stitch? Last stitch. Whatever the phrase is. A last effort to get rid of them if I'm really, really, really experiencing a problem, but I honestly haven't had that happen at all in the last few years since I have moved over to this sort of new style or approach at dealing with them. So I still have Provanto from a few years ago, which I don't even know if it's still good, that I have in my cupboard that I am just not using because that's not where I am within my plant care zone anymore. So yeah, that is it. That is how I have been dealing with thrips these past few years, how I have changed my sort of attitude towards it all. At this point in my collection, I almost always have some sort of pests. I know a lot of my plants do have thrips in my collection and it's something that I'm dealing with and it's something that I'm okay with. Like I, I'm getting through it and with, with the predatory mites for preventative and getting things like the um, adult thrip killer as well, those sort of things, I can mitigate these things and stop them from getting to be a huge outbreak. I haven't had like an infestation in quite a long time. I've just had the odd one or two on a plant here and there, which I think is an absolute success. And I also don't mind just like going in and squishing any with my fingers, cause that's quite fun. But yeah, I feel like I have improved my approach to thrips in general, and I feel more at peace and less stressed out by infestations than I would have been in previous years. So I am really glad that I have moved towards this sort of method for treatment and prevention. So yeah, that is it. That is how I treat my thrips. <laughs> if you liked this video, please give a thumbs up down below. If you have any other thrips treatment tips, put them down below in the description and it can be a wealth of knowledge for others. Highly appreciated. And don't forget to comment on anything else that you'd be interested in seeing from me here. Let me know down below in the comments and subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next time. Don't forget to keep growing. Bye.